Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. I have will see two future Hall of Famers still playing at the top of their game. It's 40-year-old TB12 Tom Brady and the young man, 38-year-old Drew Brees. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the New England Patriots. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person, big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake. Things are going to rumble. And they're going to have an impact on today's game. Here's Steven Goskowski now to kick this one off. And we are underway from the Superdome. Fielded about a yard deep. Oh, leaves him behind on the spin. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback, the former Purdue Boilermaker. It's Drew Brees. His numbers are big time, but what really impresses me about Drew Brees, his consistency. 37 touchdown passes in 2016, his ninth consecutive season with 30 or more touchdown passes, that's an NFL record, and he moved past Dan Marino last year into third place on the NFL's all-time passing yardage list. carry now for Adrian Peterson takes this up just short of the 30 but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle nice move he'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run and it's second and four awfully nice to see Adrian Peterson back and running well look it was just 2015 when he won his last rushing title got hurt in 2016 and that season became a bit of a wash yeah it did become I'm hoping to get back to that old form that you're alluding to though he does have three rushing titles including that one you mentioned in 2015 his throw is incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And that'll make it third down. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. Quarterback Drew Brees and head coach Sean Payton understand the passing game as well as anyone in the NFL, which led to a rating last year of number one in passing and number one in total overall offense. But the thing that they really do well is get the ball downfield. They understand holes in defenses, find receivers that way. But what they need to add, the running game, back to their mix. When they went to the Super Bowl and won it, they were number six in the NFL. Last season, number 16. Now Breeze. And Gens got it. A big play for the Saints on third down. And even 40 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Peterson gets the handoff from Breeze. AP still got it. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked down sideways. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. They 
They run again on first down. Peterson. And Peterson, what happened? He lost the football. And the Patriots have it. I know he carries it a lot. I know he touches it a lot. But he does have a tendency to turn it over. And sometimes in some real key situations. I just don't see how with that death grip handshake yeah. Adrian Peterson has. I would figure the ball would never pop for Yeah, you've talked about that a lot. But you give your star like AP a little bit of a break here, right? Oh, without a doubt. Because you can talk about those fumbles. And then you remember all the gigantic plays that he makes. And you learn to live with a few of them. After the fumble recovery, it's Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The wideout, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now a play fake, Brady. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The former Bill, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Oh man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Throwing is Brady on third down. And now another one thrown incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. In his fifth year from La Tech, here's the lefty Ryan Allen to punt it. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. Here's Ginn. Look at the spin. Balance. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. A starting drive number two off on the right foot. Completion for the first down. Drive one is the, they had to be pretty frustrating because they moved the football. They just didn't get any points out of it. But warm up QB two. Let's bring in the backup. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you take them down, you don't score points. You know, I'm being totally facetious <laughs> here, right? I'm just kidding. Nice first drive. Rarely do teams score on every single drive in a game, but they like what they did there. They just hope they can pay it off this time with some points. down here's a run with Peterson two yards on the carry there it'll be second down and quickly let's check out the New England defense by now we all know that New England's offensive attack is always going to be one of the best in the league 
but the defense gets overshadowed a little bit. Very cerebral in their approach. They identify the weaknesses of an offense and gear their attack towards it each and every game. So if you don't run the ball real well, guess what? They're coming after you. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make it third down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. An extra corner on the field for New England here on third down. Yeah, another DB. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Play action, now it's Brady. And now a fumble, Brady loses the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback, the ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now they face a third down after the fumble on second down. Shotgun now for Brady. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, is up a fourth down. This defense is not 
can make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here's Ryan Allen now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off, and he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. And making their way back out there now, the Patriots' defense. And yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long goal to the last goal around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? Is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit, yet we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker's able to get his confidence back as well. Brees now on first down. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Lawrence Guy in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. On second down, Peterson. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. It'll be a gain of about five, but they're left with a third and still about 12 to go. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And he'll take it just outside the 40. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Patriots take over. So the Patriots coming out now. This is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, 
They're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things out. <laughs> Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent, not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. Again, it's Lewis. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Throwing on first down is Brady. His throw incomplete. Run the intended target. Up second down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them. They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. Play action. Now Brady. He sets to fire deep. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Ten yards to go on third. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And he's got an open man, it's Gronkowski. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. The familiar refrain, Brady to Gronk for the New England first. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's worked for the defense early in this game, and now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. Brady gives this one to Lewis, and this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. They try again with Lewis. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third down, Brady. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. So on fourth down, Brady will yield to Goskowski for the field goal try. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. 
So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they've wanted to. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. On first and 10, here's Breeze. He's gonna look deep down the field. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary, they really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. From the gun on third down, Breeze. It's complete to Flaner. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Breeze finding Flaner for New Orleans first. Saints were the best team in the NFL on third down last year. 49% conversion rate helps when you have Drew Breeze back there. It certainly does because he is just so analytical in everything he does. Goes through every progression on every snap in practice. So not much surprises him on game day. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Now Peterson. And an alley to run. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Triple zeros. And time is up on the first in New Orleans. 
Sports. After this, the NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. was the intended target and that'll bring up second down i tell you brandon this defense is playing with some confidence haven't allowed a point yet flying to the football i'm telling you it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap another nice job there to force an incompletion and here comes play number six on this drive breeze will try again on second down Left side and caught by Flaner. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Here's Breeze. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. On fourth down, off goes Drew Breeze, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will tie us at 3-3. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. the kicks away that'll be taken in the end zone and he won't return this one he'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25 out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time and after the field goal last time let's see what they can get here at least they got points out of the last drive Charles I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Hey, 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 hey. Wait, wait. On play action, it's Brady. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Tyler Davison busting throw to get him for a loss of six. Well, that's the second time they've gotten to Brady, and you've got to do it a variety of ways. You want your regular pressure. Sometimes you have to bring extra. But in this case, they got to him, and that just doesn't happen very often. It's a rarity. He's just such a veteran. His pocket presence so good. But, hey, tip of the cap to the D. Now Brady throwing on second down. 
And he's going to go down again. Alex Okafor in there to drop him. And sacks on first and second downs are going to lead to a third and long. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches. And when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. From the gun, it's Brady. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about this be perfect. You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. Now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. And this will be taken at the 13. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. And he's had his chances in this game. He just hasn't been able to find any daylight so far. Patience, patience, patience. And that's the hard part for a runner because they expect every run to be a big one for something to pop. So they have to sometimes go through the struggles before it happens for them later in the game. But he got to give credit to the rest of the team. They've worked around the fact that he hasn't had his normal big game. Yeah, despite his struggles, still winning here in the second quarter. First down, Breeze. Going for the deep ball. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly. Just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Breeze again here on second and 10. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Saints on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got it over the middle, Fleener. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Here's Peterson. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Trip, trip. Oh, 
Breeze to throw on second down. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Thomas the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. The Saints on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and four. Bree's going to throw. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Lawrence Guy in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10. I think it is at the 6. All right, let's discuss Deion Lewis as he gets set to go again. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll start off with a give to Lewis. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. On second down, here's Brady. Over the middle, that's taken in by Gronkowski. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Brady to Gronkowski. They make it look easy, don't they? And it's a Patriot first down. He was the cover guy for Madden in 2016, but I don't think Gronk saw that as being his highlight for the year. What did he have, 25 catches yeah, 25. for the season? Only eight games went down for good right before Thanksgiving. You know he wants to be back with a vengeance in 2017. here back to the 15. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. in the backfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. He already has two sacks to his credit, now another tackle for a loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? 
They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, they've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible because right now he is wrecking things for them. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Alex Okafor with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Ryan Allen now as he's on to punt for New England. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now it's Ginn. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And our focus now moves to Adrian Peterson. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play. He'll be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second down, here's Breeze. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. It's a four-yard pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Here's Breeze to throw. And brought in here by Flaner. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Pretty heavy traffic over the middle on that one. And somehow, he emerged with the football. Way to possess it, despite all the extra contact and people around him. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. Here comes Tom Brady and the Patriot offense back onto the field. They've been faced with a tough test today here. Crowd's been really good. They're struggling. He's struggling. We'll see if they can pick things up. And the crowd has had an impact, and they feel good very well. Not getting the ball to the right places, not doing the things he normally does. He's got to find a way to turn it around against this hostile group. Yeah, because on the road, don't you look to your quarterback a lot? You have to because you certainly can't look to the crowd to help you. They're there to be against you, so your quarterback has to lead you. And the best way he can do it is to play well. They start the drive on the ground with Lewis. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. But at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? 
made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Brady to throw on second down. Dumps it off to Lewis. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a gain of four. And that's going to bring up a third down. Instead of the running back in New England, sometimes they like to call them the passing backs. They, they get them the ball in different ways, don't they? They certainly do. Think about the ones they've had in recent vintage. You talk about Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead, Shane Vereen. James White could have been the MVP in the Super Bowl if it wasn't for a certain quarterback that was on the field that day. Snap comes at one, and it's Brady. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Tyler Davison getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. I'm starting to wonder if this offensive line just simply doesn't like him. I mean, they've given up six sacks in this game. He's had nowhere to go, nowhere to run, and obviously nowhere to hide. And all those sacks in the first half, this is just complete domination. Here's Ryan Allen now. He's been terrific so far. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. Here's Ryan Allen now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. This is taken at the 18. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. down as Breeze. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. throwing on second down and that one got tipped kind of threw everything off it brings up third you gotta give some credit they're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away and that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove hoping to bring his arms down the saints on third down they've converted three times in eight chances this will be third and five Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans.
And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And we move to spotlighting Brandon Cooks. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Brady now on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. His tight end, Dwayne Allen, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. He'll try again on second down. Sets up the screen to Lewis. Wow, evasive. Make a miss. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. Throwing on first down is Brady. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. Last year, Hogan tied for the NFL lead at 17.9 yards per catch. Didn't quite get that many there, but still a nice hookup. And I don't want to overplay his lacrosse background, but it does bear some mentioning here. Those rushes that they make towards the goal, I think that equates into some of his pass patterns, too. Again, they'll throw with Brady. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. Now holding everything here, we're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So the offense has it first and 10. They go play action here on first down. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing, you already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Brady again here on second and 10. Going underneath for Lewis. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. On 
first and ten. Here's Brady. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And Goskowski's kick is good. So at halftime, it's the Patriots with the advantage. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both the Saints and the Patriots have not had the best success throwing the football. It's a passing league, but these defenses have mostly been able to contain that today. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. Third down at the 41. Guy is going to push his way to the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Down to late in the second. Lewis has got nobody around him on the catch and he won't be brought down until he makes it to their own 46-yard line. We're set up for a great second half, so let's get you out to it. Here's Brandon Guy. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Patriots offense now, they work their way back onto the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. First down, Brady. Right side, that's complete to Gronkowski. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 14 yards is the pickup there on a New England first down. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt. And look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find big 87. Now a play fake here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. A pretty good coverage there. And both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Looking back to the air on second down. It's Brady. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Hey. 
New England on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and ten. Now a play fake. Brady. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. Brady to his new tight end, Allen, for a Patriot first. Martellus Bennett moves on to Green Bay, so what do the Patriots do? They go get Dwayne Allen from Indianapolis. Yeah, for a fourth-round draft pick. And last year, he had 35 catches, six touchdowns as a Colt. And also, the Patriots got Brandon Cooks, Coney Ealy, and Allen all for draft picks. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now Brady again. And this is going to be caught along the sideline. Nicely done, but right at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much game than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no steak. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. So this is Lewis. Broke through some contact, but unable to reach the 40. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On third down, that's Lewis. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Too long for a field goal. Too short to punt that in-between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Brady. And this is caught. It's pulled in by Gronkowski. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. We always hear about guys wanting to make plays that quiet a crowd. Yeah. After that one. Here in the third quarter, they were hoping to get the stop, get the football back. Not the case. What a completion on a fourth down play. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. past him and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line call it a gain of 13 yards on the play and it'll make it a second down sometimes it's hard to believe but there are times this game is about patience isn't it has had the game he expected but that run there that may get him going i was just gonna say maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right he struggled especially in that first half yeah and i know the great ones always think to themselves just hang in there i'm just one big carry away from busting this open that's a good start for him 
And some options here for the offense on second and two. They'll run it here. This is James White. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Kind of running there at your own risk against that 4-3 in that big line, aren't you? Yeah, and I don't really run it against a good 4-3 team that well because I've got to get those guys on the move a little bit. If you're a static running team, meaning you just want to run it in the middle, you may have some trouble against good defensive tackles. That's what we just saw on that play. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So on fourth down, Brady will yield to Goskowski for the field goal try. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So three field goals for him here, and this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual, and this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession, and so far they've done a nice job of that. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. First and 10, here's Breeze. And his throw here's incomplete. Kobe Flaner, the tight end, his intended target. And it's second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. The play fake to Peterson. Here's Breeze to throw. Now Breeze lost the football. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about. Getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. The Saints on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and a mile. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Oh, 
Here's Thomas Morstead now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That's pulled in at the 32. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. And yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Brady now on first down. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Looking for his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. That'll bring up second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. again. Brady throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. Unable to get it to Gronkowski that time. And now it's third down. New England on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 10. On play action, it's Brady. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Gronk so tough to cover, sometimes a flag is going to come out. His size and his ability create a lot of these pass interference calls. If you're trying to go through him to get to the ball, that's almost impossible, and he benefits on the play. Fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They run. This is Lewis. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. See if they stay on the ground for second down. On play action, now Brady. The throw left side complete to Hogan. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. First and ten, Brady. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cameron Jordan in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Like 20, like 20. 
Brady to throw on second down. Allen's got it over the middle. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. New England on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and seven. Throwing is Brady on third down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Tyler Davison able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So on fourth down, Brady will yield to Goskowski for the field goal try. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And Goskowski's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The D for the Pats. The Patriots heading back onto the field now. They got the stop last time that resulted in a punt, and then it resulted in three for their offense. And this is one time where the defense won't get credit for creating points, but that's exactly what they did. All right, forced them into a punt, turned it over to their offense, and guess what? Points went on the board. Points went on the board, three of them. Now they'll be looking for another stop. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Breeze now on first down. The throw to the left side, caught by Coleman. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. So this brings up a second and two. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That run is what defenses don't like about dealing with Adrian Peterson. His ability to drop a shoulder and run through contact. And he's amazing at keeping those strong legs going, isn't he? For him, no run is ever truly over. I mean, he's actually not even convinced that when they blow the whistle, he's actually down. That's how he finishes runs in a big way. On first down, Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Ten yards still left on second down. Single, single. 
Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This is third and ten. Shotgun now for Breeze. He'll air this one toward Coleman, and that's caught inside the 30. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for 10. This will be third and forever. now is Breeze. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually that becomes man on man and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt, not too shabby. And the Pats will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. And now out come the Patriots. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit at the 19. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. To throw on third down. Brady. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Ryan Allen now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Dances by him. 
A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Three yards remaining here on second down. They run again with Peterson. And he'll running right through it. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They'll fake to Peterson, and now Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. When you and I did the weekly commentary updates last year, it seemed like we always used to talk about Michael Thomas week after week. And it piled up. 92 catches on the season, but the thing that really struck me was doing a New Orleans game and talking with a few of his teammates who talked about how much the game meant to him. And he was upset with guys he didn't think cared about the game enough. Unusual for a rookie, but it's a good sign for him. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And his throw is incomplete. Out of the backfield, Adrian Peterson was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. He's going to throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Chung. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners, who have had the receivers on lockdown. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Wait, 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 wait. 
So after the INT, it's Brady. And Gronkowski's got it complete over the middle. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down commission. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And to give this time to the tailback. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down, they'll try and run the counter. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So here we go, first and 10 now. Throwing on first down is Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Danny Amendola, the man he was trying to get it to. And that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Brady will try again on second down. This is White on the screen. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. As we well know, James White was an absolute man in the Super Bowl, but boy, his regular season wasn't bad either. Had 60 catches. 60 catches, more than Martellus Bennett, more than Chris Hogan, something that went overlooked in his arsenal. Now the offense lining up first and 10. To throw is Brady. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. A good convergence there to fit back and down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Second down now after the pass completion. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's brought down. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. 
They're handling things up front. And it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys on the perimeter blocking downfield and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air is out of the balloon. And right now, they're almost lifeless. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And now it's second down. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Brady again here on second and ten. Over the middle, that's taken in by Gronkowski. And, oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And the offense readies for play number ten of this series. the gun on third down Brady and a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete well, let's see who this is on and since the penalty occurred in the end zone move the ball to the one yard line first and goal from the one yard line costly penalty And this seemingly endless drive continues. Here's Brady to throw. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Dwayne Allen, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Patriots add six to their lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So that one a long 11 play drive and it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Koski now out to kick it away. On the return, it's Ted Ginn Jr. <laughs> and nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. shake off the interception he'll look to throw and nearly picked off there almost intercepted instead second down 
I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Second down following the incompletion. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The Saints on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and seven. Here's Breeze. And he fires one that's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Wait a second. They did not accept that after the incompletion. I'm, I'm, your, your look is just as puzzled as mine. <laughs> I got nothing for you here. You have to take that penalty, don't you? It's free yards. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Now Brady throwing on second down. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool him, right? Tried to trick him, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On third down, Brady. This is caught. Gronkowski. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Rob Gronkowski, 31 yards. And the Pats take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. The point after try for Goskowski. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it ends with a New England touchdown. Goskowski now out to kick it away. 
This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had a victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And down he'll go at the 25. you got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? Tackle him after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. To throw, it's Breeze. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Coleman. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now, Breeze again toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Again, it's Breeze. Now Breeze lost the football, and it's picked up by the Patriots. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return and a Patriot touchdown. Second time he's lost a fumble. This one hurts more. It's return for six. He's been under a lot of duress, hasn't he? pressured, hurried, harassed the whole game. Well, but the offensive line not giving him a lot of help. Not a lot of help, but the bottom line, he's got to take care of the football. Extra point try for Goskowski. And that'll increase their lead to 28. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six.
So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And down he goes just shy of the 25. Now a penalty marker is down. Let's see what that's about. Holding receiving team. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. With that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. and 10. Here's Breeze. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And he's brought down after a good game. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. comes to the line now first and ten working from the gun it's breeze got his man complete over the middle that's Lewis and he'll go down right around the 47 this time a gain of six there on first So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Four yards remaining now on second down. Shotgun now for Breeze. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. And on third and inches, we're going to get a whistle and a timeout as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. It's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. And Gim's got it. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Breeze to another longtime vet Gim for the New Orleans first. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Breeze to throw on second down. It's complete. Flater right side. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Now 
That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Second down, here's Breeze. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds remaining in the football game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. They get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. Ready. Breeze now to throw. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Ready. You waiting? Single, single, slot, slot. Hey, you're on an island over there. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. All start offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This officially a 55-yard attempt. this one that is no good well outside the left upright and this score will stay right where it is so another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking yeah this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance it's a 50 50 proposition at best now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.